I'm Jordan Lulich and this is the Lulich Corner and today, this morning, I get the opportunity to sit down with Lance Lunsford from the Taxpayers Association of Indian River County. This is a local organization that is very involved with our local government, our local politics, and Lance is currently the, the president of the Taxpayers Association. So Lance, thank you for coming on, thank you for volunteering your time, and thank you for what you do for the community. Before we get started and talk a little bit more about the Taxpayers Association, I'd mm -hmm. like to give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about yourself um, mm -hmm. and introduce yourself to our audience. Absolutely. So first of all, Jordan, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I really appreciate this. It's a lovely business and it's a lovely day for us to have this conversation. My name is Lance Lunsford. I'm born and raised in Vero Beach, Florida. I was basically been a resident here my whole life, native and homegrown in every capacity, except for the four years I was away at university. But I guess the thing to say, the thing that's important to talk for, for myself to articulate is that the reason I'm involved in the Taxpayers Association, the reason I, the reason I believe it's important to be an engaged and informed citizen and what really prompted me into this uh, journey of leadership across the community is I am someone who wants to make sure that we live in a country where every single American is able to unlock their full potential and achieve their dreams. I mean, that's really the North Star for me when I think about everything I do as a citizen, as a person. And that's prompted my journey into this into the association. So we're going to talk a lot about the Taxpayers Association, but that's really the personal element of why I'm involved in all this. Why I think it's important to really have opinions and perspective and be and be not only engaged in the process of governance, but potentially adopting as much responsibility as a leader personally. Whether you're you know involved in the association, whether you're leading as a member of government, it doesn't matter. Every one of us can be involved in some way and really again make this county and make this country the crown jewel of the world. Yeah, I think that. That's great. You know, I think everybody has a motivation on what, mm -hmm. why they do what they do, or at least they should, or they should yeah. think about it. Mm -hmm. um, so that motivating factor is what drives you to, to be involved and volunteer mm -hmm. your time and, and to, to put on these events and, and yeah. to try to improve the, the betterment of the community. So mm -hmm. um, thank you for, for what you do and thank you for coming on here. Now, there's probably a lot of people out there that don't know what the Taxpayers Association is. Um, and I've had the benefit for recently coming to a few meetings and, and sure. I've, you know, been involved a little bit more intimately, but how would you, how would you explain to someone who mm -hmm. has absolutely no idea what the taxpayers mm -hmm. association, I mean, do you get together to pay taxes or what, what is it that you do? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Uh, the, the most common misconceptions are either that we're part of the tax collector's office, um, or that, you know, basically we're part of the government in some capacity. We are not. We are one of the oldest groups in Indian River County. So we were formed in 1933. There's, wow. There's only uh, two groups that are not governments, that are not cities or counties that I can think of that are older than us. One is the, I believe, the Vero Beach Rotary Club. And the second is First Baptist Church, is where, which is where I went to church growing up, That which was in 19, 1926 was Rotary and 1915 was First Baptist Church. But we were founded wow. in 1933, but we were rechartered officially in 1957. So it's a very old organization that really extends back to and has deep roots in the community across the whole county. I'll go through the what, the why, and the how. Our association is est established to secure the principles of liberty which allow America to flourish. And so that's really the North Star that guides the association. We believe the best way to do that is through a limited and focused government that is really, really clear-eyed on providing essential services to the community. You know, a lot of people might think the term limited government implies an ideological bias, but the reality is I think every citizen wants to see a great return on investment for their tax dollars. Yeah. So we are more of a nonpartisan presiding force across the region rather than a specific advocating force. A lot of political organizations are formed really to lobby or advocate on key particular issues. We more so believe that, believe in being above the political fray and above the mudslinging that happens in government across local, state, and state and regional levels. We try to focus on really saying what are the values that we want for this community. What are the what's the range of priorities that we need to have to flourish as a county, as a set of municipalities, and really for all of our general livelihoods. And so the difference between our association and perhaps other organizations is that while they might advocate for very specific issues, where we're really focused on overarching matters. And, and that's reflected not only from our members, but also we, we are thankful to have buy-in from most of the elected countywide officials who are actually members of the association. That's really good. It, it sounds like you're taking like the, the constitutional uh, principles for the, the, the constitution, the declaration of independence for the country, mm -hmm. and you're you're making them into light and kind of just mm -hmm. acting on those principles that our country was founded upon. And, and I could personally attest, I've been to a couple of meetings in these pa past couple of months and I had the opportunity to see the school board candidate form. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity Good. to see the county commission form. And, and you know, there was candidates across the spectrum there and yeah. running for, for the same seat. 
And in no way did I see any sort of bias or any sort of leaning towards one candidate over the other. It was more of an objective form that the purpose was to try to get out the information for people to make an educated and informed decision themselves, but not really pushing a certain agenda um, that I per- personally mm-hmm. witnessed in attending the Taxpayers Association. So, with what you're saying, I mm-hmm. think it directly lines up with what what your what the organization's actions are, which I think mm-hmm. which I think is a great thing. And I was surprised there were a lot of county elected officials there, mm-hmm. a lot. So you did say yeah. that. I mean, there was from the tax collector's office to the the clerk's mm-hmm. office to city council, mm-hmm. county commission. I was blown away by the mm-hmm. the involvement from our local elected mm-hmm. officials at at the event. So. Um, I think that was absolutely true on what you said before. Tell the audience, Lance, mm-hmm. a little bit about what events that Taxpayers Association puts on yeah. in the past. Talk a little bit about mm-hmm. more in depth about those events. Is it mainly candidate forums or yeah. what? What what's the purpose of mm-hmm. getting involved? What, what does yeah. one get out of joining the Taxpayers Association? Absolutely, Jordan. Great question. I'm going to touch on some of your points mm-hmm. in, in my answer, but there's really three different things that the Taxpayers Association really does. Uh, the first is what most people see, which are our monthly luncheons. And those can, those are on different topics that we feel are really important for the community. So we've had county commission forum, forums. We've had school board forums. It's 2024, which is an election year. So I'm sure many people can appreciate that this is, as I've dubbed the year of forums for our association, but really our monthly luncheons are always the first Friday of every month, currently at the Vero Beach Yacht Club. And they're really a way for, they're kind of like mini town halls. They're opportunities for, you know, people who are just everyday citizens to break bread with elected officials. So that's really the first aspect of what we do. The second part, which is really the bulk of our work is actually the oversight that we conduct across the region. So our board of directors is, is the body in our association that makes all formal recommendations to, you know, the community, to our membership, to elected officials, they're powered by several oversight committees underneath the board of directors that are composed of our members. Okay. So there's a lot of moving parts in the Taxpayers Association that maybe people don't necessarily see. And of course, a reasonable question might be, well, Lance, if you're, if you're actually trying to achieve certain policies and host these nonpartisan forums, how does it really square away? Well, that goes back to something I often like to say, which is that a lot of people think that being neutral or being nonpartisan or having, or is about not having any biases. I disagree. I think being nonpartisan is a principle that you are going to subordinate whatever your personal priorities are to really provide that objective information. So part of what we do is provide information to the community through our forums. Another part of what we do is really kind of the behind the scenes work to, for example, make sure that our tax burdens don't go up as a county to make sure that we are focusing, whether it's the Indian River County government, whether it's the school board, whether it's City of Vero Beach, City of Felsmer, City of Sebastian, Mm -hmm. we're all focused on doing the things that are most important to our citizens. So that's more of the behind the scenes stuff. And the final component is really the network of the association. So you touched on this, but um, we are fortunate actually to have every single elected countywide official except for except for one, if that's the Board of County Commissioners and all five constitutional officers. And I won't say who, but the last one actually last week actually even asked to be a member. So quite frankly, we do very well among the elected officials. Most elected officials, uh, four of the five city council members of the city of Vero Beach, including the mayor, are members. Uh, Felsmere City Clerk, City Manager, and Mayor and Chief of Police are members. So you can see we have a wide breadth of elected officials um, in the community who are part of the association. Of course, in addition to that, many prominent donors, many prominent heads of philanthropic organizations are part of the association's membership. The school board forum you mentioned is interesting. I'll, I'll state this kind of briefly. That was one of the most well-attended events we have, but actually – we had less elected officials there than usual. And that's just because four of them had told me they wouldn't be able to make the form. So sure. we are fortunate to do very well among um, the people who are decision makers in the county. And we, we, we appreciate the trust that they put into our association. That's great. Lance, talk to me a little bit about what we talked about, what past events you've done. We talked yeah. about the, the monthly luncheons where you've got different speakers that are coming in and t- mm-hmm. speaking about sure. different topics. But talk to me about what future events that the Tax Players mm-hmm. Association has planned or yeah. maybe is in the works and what, what to expect on what's coming. Great. And like I said, because it's an election year, a lot of our events can be fairly predictable. So the next one in May is going to be a very exciting bylaw review that the Taxpayer Association needs to put on. Okay. Uh, we're also going to have a, a constitutional officers, a supervisor of elections, Leslie Swan, and clerk of the court, Ryan Butler, who I actually believe was on this uh, yep. podcast not too long ago. Right. Many people need should uh, probably understand that the five state constitutional officers that preside over New York County are actually our supervisor of elections, our tax collector, our clerk of court, our sheriff, and our property appraiser. And so two of them will be at the next 
a forum giving a presentation on elections and the recent report that was released covering the county that the clerk of the court does every year. June, we typically like to do a legislative update from our state representative, Robbie Brackett, and state senator, Aaron Grawl. Most people might know that session usually ends in April or March, but we like to do a little bit later because it allows us to digest and really understand what are the effects and ramifications of the legislative session. Mm -hmm. July and August are usually kind of up to us. We can decide whatever we want to have during those ones. Those are more quiet in the year. But usually September and October are a City of Vero Beach forum and a City of Sebastian uh, candidate forum because that's typically every year there's a municipal elections. And then November, what we've typically done is we have a state of the county update from the county administrator and the chair of the county commission, which is perfect because that's sort of the end of their term. So those three months are typically set that we can adjust it within uh, within reason. And then one that I know a lot of people are excited about, we're currently in the process of trying to have a sheriff's a debate, which we're just ironing out the details with the candidates on specific dates because that's going to be such a big event that we can't have it at our typical <laughs> venue. Yep. So we're actually going to try to have a special date for that. So we're, because of that, we're trying to work with the candidates to find an appropriate date. But all this is definitely the first part of what we do. Um, and like I said, it's important to have these public events that really symbolize a unified community. Very excellent. Lance, I commend you. I commend the team. I commend the organization for putting on you know, these events, put, putting on these luncheons, for putting on these forums to allow people to, to really get more information about what's happening in, yeah. in their local community and, and to be more involved and be able to make more informed decisions. Sure. So I think it's a phenomenal organization. I think the outcome and, and the value that you're providing in the community is, is great. If someone wanted to attend one of these forums, mm-hmm. these luncheons, or yeah. even wanted to join the organization, how can they find out more information? Absolutely. So the first way a lot of people that might be very convenient is our website website is www.tpairc.org. However, if you remember what I said earlier, we always have our monthly luncheons on the first Friday of every month at the Vero Beach Yacht Club starting at noon. We do it except walk-ins. So we're a very accessible organization for people who just want to learn more and come and attend these things. Great. Well, Lance, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. This is the Lulich Corner and I'm Jordan Lulich and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.